thank you for uh, speaking with us at Innovating Smart today. Tell us, what is your full name and your organization, and what is the innovative thing that you're doing, and what's compelling about that to you? Sure. Uh, my name is Phil Hurlth, and I work in the Tech Partnerships Office here at NASA Ames. Um, what we do is we set up partnerships between uh, companies in the U.S. and NASA researchers, so they can work together to leverage each other's resources and to help make it easier to develop new great technologies. The other thing that we do is we also take these technologies that NASA has developed and we transfer those technologies to industry. And when we do that, that actually creates jobs, it can create new companies, and it benefits the U.S. economy. Sounds like it's a compelling story on many fronts. Is there anything about it that is especially compelling to you personally? Why are you doing this work? So I, I think there's two things. I mean, one, one thing is there's a benefit to the economy, which is a monetary thing, which is great. But I think the, the more exciting thing is that there's the benefits to the quality of life for Americans. One of the things that happens a lot of times is our technologies get utilized for, say, for medical purposes, and they can create benefits to, to uh, you know, for people in, in, in everyday life. Um, all kinds of things. It's really pretty cool. So we think about NASA as being mostly focused on um, aerospace and aviation, but in fact, the technologies that NASA develops um, can be applied in many different industries, and, and one especially is the area of medicine. Yes, that's absolutely true. And, and, I mean, one, one example is uh, there was a, a probe that was developed here uh, using a neural network software. And originally, it was going to be used to go to Mars. It was going to help actually characterize the soil samples in Mars and characterize what, what the soil samples were made of. Well, the researcher that was working on that ended up talking with a neurosurgeon who was visiting, and they decided, hey, you know what, this could be applied to looking at potential tumors. So we, any he kind ended of up, tissue. Any, any kind, kind of tissue, tissue right? Wow. So they ended up developing this. Um, we, we filed a patent application, filed a patent on the technology, and we, have, we licensed it to a company called Bioluminant, and Bioluminant now is using this as a probe that can go into suspected tumors, and mainly in for breast cancer, they can go into the tumor and with a simple needle type of biopsy they can characterize with a 99% accuracy if, if the tissue is normal or if it's malignant. So that company is, is looking to raise money to take it to the next step right now. They haven't commercialized it yet, but that's one example about how a NASA technology developed for one thing can be applied and used for other things. And there's in the 21st century, looking again at our, our material world, it has become very important after we've spent a lot of time uh, thinking only about our virtual world and taking our material work world for granted. Right. I can only imagine that there might be many, many, many applications of uh, such a uh, tissue measuring and um, um, uh, characterizing technology such as this. That's right, that's right. Great. Um, what, what, Phil, is the next big goal that, uh, that you're facing in the in, uh, in your field, which is, the, again, the technology partnerships? Well, we're always trying to make things more efficient and make things happen faster. I mean, one thing is great is NASA. NASA is great at developing new technologies that we can transfer, that we can partner with companies on. But Working within the government can be a challenge because it's a bureaucracy and sometimes it's hard to get things done in, in, a, in a quick amount, of, in a short amount of time. You know, a lot of these small companies that we work with just run it at light speed, right? And the government's slow, big, plotting creature, right? So to, to kind of mesh those up, it's, it's a challenge. So it's always, we're always trying to streamline things and to make things work faster here in the government. So what are the um, systems integration challenges that you either face um, or that you actually help mitigate through your uh, technology partnership models? So systems integration, I guess what I, what I think of is, is mainly, you know, the systems that I deal with are really more about the, the offices and the approvals needed to get these partnerships through and to get the licenses executed. So, so you know, there's always the integration between what we're doing at the, at the field center and then what we're doing at NASA headquarters and making sure that everyone's on board and online and approving of everything. Uh, and making sure everything is, the documents are legal, we work with our legal office, so we're trying to integrate the legal office, headquarters approval, and, and the research organizations that we deal with. So, so those are always things we're trying to to make work faster and work better. Right. 
And are there any um, um, uh, systems integration uh, challenges um, with technology that you're actually addressing through the vehicle of partnerships? I guess one of the things we, we, we do is we look at new technologies and when, when we, there's a process we go through and we determine if there's commercial potential for the technology and if there is, then we decide to patent, we try to pursue a patent on the technology. So that whole system, you know, it's, it would be nice to try to, to make that system a little bit smoother, a little bit faster, a little bit better. And it's always an education to try to, it's, it's an effort to educate the researchers to make sure they're disclosing their new technologies to us. So we know about them and then we can pursue patents. So, so yes, that's something, it's another area that we need to really try to, to streamline as we can. My last question for you is, uh, what advice do you have for other people trying to do innovative things? I guess one of the things is, is you need to step back periodically and look at the big picture and how important what you're doing is. I mean, the great things that come out of transferring technology and doing partnerships. Sometimes you can, when you're up close and you're working on the little details day to day, it can get frustrating trying to get things done. When you step back and you look at the big picture, you see it's all worthwhile and there's some really great stuff happening. So that is a great motivator for me when I step back and look at the big picture. That is great advice. Thanks so much for talking with us all right, today. You're welcome.